Hey, you're watching Kimbers and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we will share with you guys some post-travel maintenance. So without further ado, I'm just going to pan this camera. So over here, we can actually see that, you know, when I'm back from the travel, uh, there's a lot of things that we need to do some maintenance. However, you know, because we deploy a lot of these uh, Ramshon snails and we do the Kallax ball and we do all of this before we travel, and when we come back, you can actually see that most of the tanks are fine, are more or less uh, okay. Uh, especially this tank, if you guys have been following me, this tank, uh, we have green water. And just before, you know, two or three weeks before the uh, travel, uh, we actually took some of this uh, copy pots from these tanks and then transfer it down. And now you can actually see that the tank is actually clear right you know we of course did a blackout uh, we turn off the lights however you know the copy pots in this tank has really you know uh, get to it and you didn't do any water change on, on this one maybe it's like 10 percent just a weekly water change but this tank you can see that is really you know clear already so you can see all the tanks are clear right here uh, there's no green water so we actually do the copy pots and turning off the lights uh, so when we are back we actually went through and see what are some of the issues so the number one thing that we always do is that first is to look at whether the tanks are okay whether the streams are okay and for all the tanks uh, i think fairly we went through around and the tanks are looking okay except for this tank this particular tank uh, has some issues um, so what we did is that we did a you know a 30 percent water change clean off the filters and then we'll see what happens to the stream. Um, we didn't really test on the, uh, the ammonia or, or anything because when we see dead streams, definitely there will be an ammonia spike. So we're gonna remove, um, so we remove some of the water and then we top it up. So this is a center tank. So in terms of risk mitigation, uh, I actually have one center tank over here and another center tank over here. So which means that I'm actually trying to uh, mitigate the risk if like for example in this case if this tank crashes and there's no uh, streams left at least you know i have a backup over here and over here however if i have so many racks the best method actually is to not to put them uh, in the exact same rack because what happens if this rack has a problem so in terms of risk mitigation uh, it's actually better to actually move you know uh, to house the same type of streams in different areas so that's where we are looking at so over here we can actually see that uh, we have fed our streams uh, so the streams are actually not moving because we are using the breeder select and of course the calyx that helps to uh, maintain when we are gone so all the streams are doing well and this is where uh, the black ninjas are so they are living here and then on the other side we have uh, some oe rates some black fancy and the blue boat so in all the next few episodes uh, we will be showcasing and sharing a different type of series it's called rethink so uh, watch those videos to really think about some of the areas that we can really change in terms of the entire approach however fundamentally we will still maintain what we do however the approach will be slightly different so over here we have the uh, Red Devils, uh, Opea Ula tank, you can see that there's a lot of LG, so we have to clean that. And this is just another Sula tank. So over here we have tanks that needs to be cleaned out as well, uh, but we will use snails to actually clean them up. So on the other side of things, uh, can take a look over here. Uh, generally, I think from the looks of it, they look fairly okay except for we got to clean this glass and we got to look at this this will be a green water so that the other tank we actually fixed the other tank and now we have a green water over here so what we're going to do uh, with this tank is that we're going to take some copy pots put it in here we're going to turn off the light so in a couple of weeks this tank will be back to normal so we usually like to use a very natural approach rather than uh, to use like UVs or anything. Of course, UVs will help drastically and it will be very, very quick. Uh, however, you know, why don't 
we just use a natural method. Just put some copy pots in there, switch off the lights, do your regular water change, and that's about it. So you can see that, you know, uh, more or less, the tanks are fairly okay. Uh, there hasn't been uh, a lot of issues except for that tank over there. Um, yeah, so that tank over there, we have a, an issue. And just want to let you guys see, here is the winning streams. So these are the Black Ninja Extreme, and we have some other streams as well over here. So uh, I would, you know, uh, all this success, all these, you know, awards and everything, uh, really goes to the family because at the end of the day, the family is the one that actually supports you in the hobby. So um, give thanks to them, you know, uh, whenever you can. So all the hobbies, the breeders, please give thanks to your and appreciate your family because they are the ones that actually are the ones that help you grow to where you are today. So uh, take some time, you know. So that's also the reason why, you know, uh, when I'm back here in Singapore. So basically we will push out, you know, uh, all appointments and orders and everything uh, to a much later stage where we can uh, kind of like settle down back first before we actually go back where we are. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, every time when I'm back, uh, I do not accept any of these uh, appointments and I do not uh, work on the uh, stream room and I also don't work on some of these orders as well. So that's the reason why uh, we will have to really take this time and take a step back to really appreciate your family because who you are today is where the support comes from. So if you get a lot of support from your your you know from your kids uh, and your wife or your spouse you no know, make sure that you also give thanks to them as well and appreciate and be grateful that they are there for you so it doesn't mean that they will like your hobby or love your hobby just the same way as you do uh, however you will also need to understand that just by giving you peace and time and and the space to actually do it uh, on your own time frame and not bother you and i think that in itself is a really a very supportive gesture so i would really appreciate my uh, you know my family as well um, and they have been through this journey with me and i'm sure you know a lot of you guys uh, as well so have a good chat you know have a good meal with your family uh, thank them for for tolerating your nonsense <laughs> so i think that's one of the things because only only us will understand how much we actually uh, being very devoted, being very passionate about the hobby, uh, and you know they may not even see the same light as as what we we do, uh, in terms of the uh, the passion of the hobby. So do not take them for granted. Uh, appreciate them, um, and you know spend some time with them so that you know uh, make sure that they are also happy as well. So yes. So from that perspective, uh, I would like to also share uh, another thing, uh, rather, uh, you know, just other than this uh, maintenance of the, the tank, I think we have seen quite a lot of, uh, you know, commercial breeders uh, sh shut down their businesses uh, during the recent years. And one of the reasons is because there hasn't been any, you know, peaks or there hasn't, or business hasn't been really, uh, lucrative in, in that sense. So a lot of big breeders actually uh, remove or you know, uh, exited the business when they don't see any uh, value or any more money in it or not as good as, as previously. And I think that's, that's fair enough because they come from a business perspective. Uh, there is no hard and fast rule in when to exit the business. So as long as once the profit is not coming through, uh, the profits are not as great as previously, then they will exit the business. So, however, from a hobby standpoint, I think the the intention of the hobby is very different, and we breed the streams, keep the streams, it's because that we like the streams, not because they are units and dollars, and that is uh, one of the I think the biggest differentiating factor when it comes to whether there's a big downturn or anything in terms of the stream industry. Um, the hobbies will always be there and I think it's uh, fairly great that we actually see that uh, a lot of these contests are being 
participated by hobbies rather than you know, large commercial breeders and the reason is because um, if, if it's up to me I would think that you know, large commercial breeders uh, doing this like for example a full time then from a judging or grading criteria they should have a handicap in that sense and the reason is very simple because this is their full time job they have to do it well uh, compared to uh, home hobbies of course the home hobbies can also do do very well I'm not saying that the home hobbies cannot do it well however from a criteria perspective I would think that to make it a uh, level playing field all entries by commercial breeders that do this you know full time uh, should get some handicap in that in that sense so that we kind of like level out the playing field and of course they are their streams will need to be extremely good to actually compete against uh, home hobbies as well so that kind of like um, that's just one thought about it uh, another thought about it is that I really like uh, how the Italy contest is run uh, one of the reasons is because there hasn't been a lot of commercial breeders and I think that is where the true reflection of the hobby is uh, however you know all events uh, is all about profits so all events need to generate at least some profits if not the events will not be able to continue so a lot of event organizers uh, will look at it as okay how much can such an event actually generate in terms of footfall in terms of ticket sales in terms of advertising in terms of sponsors so there's a lot of things going on uh, behind it and I would certainly encourage a lot of uh, breeders to actually look at uh, participating in the next year's 2025 Italy Stream Contest. And with that, I uh, really appreciate the time and I hope you guys uh, a wonderful weekend. And don't forget to look at the new series, Rethink. And until next time, peace out.